so there's some key questions of interpretation um, going forward. Um, for example, one of the key questions is which companies will be covered, right? Of course, the congressional intent and our, and our wish is that the broadest number of companies are covered, both foreign and US companies. But there is a bit of interpretation of the language of the law um, and in terms of what, what companies will be covered. There are some companies that are asking for broad exemptions. And clearly, that goes against congressional intent. Um, so obviously, we're not for any type of exemption. Um, I think, um, and we can go into the details of, of, of what the specific requirements of the law are, but I think there's some questions around, around coverage. Um, so that one risk is that, that, people, that, that companies will continue to push for some broad exemption. Um, I, I, on what yeah. basis are they uh, making the argument that they're Sh exempt? Sure. Um, so the language of the law requires that, um, that companies that file an oil, gas, and mining companies that file, sorry, companies that um, file an annual report with the Securities and Exchange Commission and are involved in the commercial development of oil, gas, and minerals are required to make these disclosures. Yeah? How you define, how you define an annual report, which annual reports actually trigger this disclosure is a question. Um, and foreign issuers and domestic issuers issue different types of reports and have different requirements. In the foreign issuers, even within foreign issues, there's three different categories of disclosure with, with different types of reporting. And there's some questions around which one of those reports will trigger a full disclosure, mm -hmm. yeah? So there's, some, there's still some questions. Um, and so um, I think that, that that's more or less where, the, where some of the big questions are, are coming out. Um, otherwise, I think um, uh, it's actually quite critical um, that we bring other markets on board. Mm -hmm. um, because at the end of the day, um, even if we have all, all the companies covered in the US um, that are listed with US stock exchanges and registered with the SEC, both US and foreign companies, that doesn't cover all of the uh, oil, gas, and mining companies operating around the world. There's medium to small size companies that aren't covered um, that are listed in Toronto Stock Exchange. There's some listed in Hong Kong. There's some listed on LSE. So we need other markets to come on board in order to cover that gap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we need because we do need the broadest coverage possible. Yeah. So that's that's a few of the issues. I have some more, but I could leave it there. So just in terms of. Putting aside for a second yeah. the, the SEC rules and what, what yes. the outcome of that is, I'd love to ask each of you what you anticipate could come about as a result of this um, law once it goes into effect. So is there going to be a day on which we learn, you know, a la WikiLeaks, all the secrets of the government contracts that, uh, <laughs> that we haven't known before? I mean, what, what is your hope for what's a best case information scenario that we have as a result of this that we didn't have before? And then also, how likely do you think that is that we'll, we'll get to that best case scenario? Well, policy-wise, and I'm sure that you'll have a different take on it, I think it would be great, and I think that Senator Cardin feels that the, the further we press this, the better. Um, Isabel touched on it, moving to the UK market. They're very philosophically friendly to this already, and they created the ITI, and we've been in touch with people there and groups there, a lot of our colleagues here, uh, investors and members of parliament and interested parties, and, and it seems like that would be ripe. And if you get the LSE, you get a lot more companies. And moving on, maybe even at a, at a multilateral level, which it, we were really excited to see the president mention it at the UN uh, and the G20 this summer. So I think policy-wise, that's where we'd like to see this go, um, to have a unified global uh, regulation on this really takes away almost all the arguments against it and obviously would bring great riches in, in return of uh, transparent information. But do you have a sense of what, what information you're, you're anticipating from this? Um, well, um, the, the Extractive Industries Transparency uh, Initiative has already demonstrated um, with support of governments, companies, NGOs, that having uh, information on company payments and information on government receipts sitting side by side is, is a recipe to allow citizen oversight. Um, and, 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 and that's the model we think is a good idea, but we want a mandatory mechanism. The EITI is a voluntary mechanism where, where governments choose to sign up, yeah? Um, so uh, what we think will happen with this is that we think it's going to unleash um, uh, an incredible amount of information in a standardized format. Mm -hmm. 
um, that's going to allow civil society to really uh, make those assessments of how much specific companies are paying to their government for what type of payment. Um, and, and I think that um, in countries, there's going to be a, we're really excited about the impacts in, in, in a specific number of countries, which right now really, uh, there's a very little chance that their governments are going to sign up to the ITI. Um, there's, civil, there's a lot of crackdown on civil society, Burma, Cambodia, uh, Angola. Um, so we think that this is going to unleash um, an incredible amount of information in places that really didn't have it. Um, so that's one. Um, we think also that... Um, we think that this is going to empower NGOs that work within the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative um, in, in implementing countries. And for those of you that, that aren't familiar with the initiative, essentially in, in the countries that decide to sign up, they sign up to the EITI rules, which requires disclosure of, of company payments and government receipts. But the government decides what level of aggregation of the payments is necessary. So they sort of set their, they sort of adapt the, the global rules to their own context at a national level. Um, at the national level, then, there's a, a, a multi-stakeholder group with civil society companies and the government that sit at the same table, and they basically work through the process. Um, at, this, at this MSG, as it's called, um, NGOs push, and our partners, which serve on most of, most of the EITI implementing country MSGs, they're really pushing their governments to get more detailed disaggregated data. They want to know company by company, payment by payment, how much is flowing between the companies and, and, and governments. And what we've heard already from uh, partners in Azerbaijan is that after Cardin Luger passed, um, they went and made a proposal to their government to ask for ask for disaggregated reporting by by company by company payment by payment and Previously, within their EITI process, the disclosures were done um, on an aggregated basis. So you couldn't figure out what companies were paying what. And now since several companies that are operating in Azerbaijan will be covered by Card and Luger, this gives them um, a little bit more ammunition to ask the government to then disaggregate. Um, and to essentially make it standard for, for, their, for their country. Um, so, um, and what we just heard from them a couple weeks ago is that this proposal was accepted by the government. So this is a really concrete example of how this is really going to push uh, this voluntary initiative forward and really enable activists to, to, to take more action. Um, it really gives them something to work with. Um, lastly, I wanted to mention um, uh, at the World Bank fall meetings a few months ago, I met with um, a Ugandan MP. And we talked about the law, and we talked about what it required. And he was really excited because he said, well, I really want to push for contract transparency. If I can get, if, if, if some companies are covered in my market, um, and I can get these payments on paper, I can then go and say, well, I need to see the contract in order to make sense of these payments. 